Hello everybody, um, my name is Adrian Nixon and from the Nixon Journal and today I'm at the Graphene Engineering Innovation Centre in Manchester, the Geek. And this is a special visit for us because we've, this is the first time we've been able to get to talk to uh, the guys at Nationwide Engineering and we've got the Chief Exec of Graphene at Manchester, James Baker, with us as well. So we have um, Alex McDermott. That's me. And you are a Joint Managing Director of Correct. Nationwide Engineering. Correct. And Rob Hibbard, you're the other Joint Managing Director. I am. Yes. And then James Baker, Chief Exec of everything here. Hi. Now, you guys have been playing with graphene and concrete, and this is a joint venture effort between the Geek and Nationwide Engineering. So, you've built some new buildings. We have. Tell us about them. Yes. So, in relation to the slab that we poured on the 20th of May, uh, this year is a uh, it's a brand new gym facility called Southern Water. It's down in Amesbury, Wiltshire, and the slab that we poured there was 47 metres long and 18 metres wide. Uh, we reduced it from 200 millimetres thick to 150, and we took out all of the steel reinforcement and wow. any edge thickenings, and we then used just a standard C30 OPC concrete. And to put it into context, we're putting about two kilos of the concretine and graphene mixture into 20 tonnes of concrete. Uh, we applied that straight in through a normal batching plant, so no uh, additional software or technology required, uh, and the slab has performed perfectly. Uh, no, no cracks, no expansion joints, uh, nothing. So we did that, and then most recently, actually as recently as Monday, we poured another 250 tonnes on, on another site, uh, uh, using exactly the same technology um, again, and, and once again it's worked uh, really well. And so, so if, if I'm a customer, right, so I'm, I'm commissioning a building from you, what does that mean? Uh, in, in relation to, to, to how, as in what, how can you get this technology into what's, it, what's in it for me for using concrete? I, th I think that the major benefits are, to give, a, to give an idea, with the concrete slab that we bought at Southern Quarter, we worked out that in the cost savings, the prelim savings, the physical concrete that was saved, which is over 90 tonnes, and all the steel reinforcement removed, plus the fact that we'd actually gained so much strength that in 18 hours we were laying brickwork on top of it and building stuff, you know, building wow. walls, that we think we saved around about 16,000 pounds on just that single slab. Wow. And accelerated the development time as well. Correct. So you're not waiting for stuff to set. That's right, hence we reduced the prelims on site. So it took less time to prepare the slab and then we were able to get onto it afterwards with secondary trades and keep building. So if we take your supply chain thinking, James, then there's all sorts of knock-on effects down that. Right? Um, this is one of the great things with graphene is a number of our clients, we start off with one process of you know, reducing the amount of material. But for me, not only have we reduced the amount of concrete, we've taken out the metal reinforcement, we've reduced the cure time, so for me, it's a good case study where graphene, you often get secondary or tertiary benefits. So we haven't probably done all the costing yet on through life costs, because it's still early days. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so there may be other benefits yet we haven't really seen yet. So, so I guess this is important for me that probably going back a few years when people saw graphene, they saw it as an added cost. So there's a lot of marketing hype around mm -hmm. adding graphene into something they could charge a premium for. Yeah. But actually, graphene can be seen as a saving not just in cost, but in terms of CO2. And I think that increasingly will be where graphene will start to play a difference in construction, as an example. Really impressive. Alex, what's next? Because obviously you're not going to stop here. Yeah, well, it's, a, it's an exciting programme. Um, we, we've just mapped out the next three years. Um, we're working towards achieving accreditation for the product in, in the UK and Europe. And also looking at doing that across the world as well with, with selected markets. Um, ultimately, it comes down to, to more testing, uh, validation of results, um, trialing the uh, formulation with, with other opportunities to reduce our ultimate goal to eliminate completely um, cement from, from concrete. Uh, so we're working, working down, down that uh, program uh, currently. Um, and, and also other exciting areas such as the use of recycled aggregates in, in concrete. Because when you re use recycled aggregates, the strength drops, don't you? Correct. So can you boost that back up again? Correct. Yeah. yeah. So that's mm -hmm. another, another area we're looking at at the moment. That's yeah. massive. Tight looked at the moment, but um, yeah, we're... So for me as a goal, just... to my left is the old Faraday Tower on what was Ubers campus. What we really want is to pull that down, grind it up, 
build a new building outside. And that will local supply, you know, <laughs> shipping aggregate out, you're not shipping aggregate in. For me, that will also further reduce the carbon footprint as a carbon. That wouldn't have been possible before. Um, uh, no, not graphene, right. you would end up with a pile of dust. Yeah. Wow. Alex, Rob, James, amazing talking to you. I think we're going to have to come back and have another one of these chats. Um, but for now, thank you very much and, well, good luck for the future. Thank, thank you. you.